Hello everyone, this is the popular superstore dataset. Uh, it actually consists of several variables such as the order ID, uh, the order date, the shipment date, the ship date rather, the ship mode, customer ID. Uh, it has a couple of qualitative variables aka categorical variables and um, it has just four numerical variables okay or we can say four quantitative variables. So I actually want to build a linear regression model based on the quantitative variables and also interpret the linear regression model so this is a video of me teaching you how to use microsoft excel to actually build a linear regression model but before i start um, building this model i would like to give you a brief explanation on what is the linear regression model or the regression model it may sound intimidating, but in the simplest form, the linear regression model or the regression model in general is actually a single equation that is used to predict one variable from another single variable or one variable from several variables. So it's all about the variables. So basically a variable is actually any detail or any value that can change its value over a period of time. Okay. So. Whenever we use a single variable to predict another variable, then we have what we call uh, the simple linear regression. And uh, if we are going to be using multiple variables to predict a single variable, we have what we call multiple linear regression. So when we are trying to predict a single variable with at least two variables, meaning from two, three, four, five, then we have what we call a multiple linear regression. So what we are predicting is what we'll call the predicted variable aka the dependent variable and what we are using to predict is what we'll call um, the independent variable so for a simple linear regression we have one dependent variable and we have just a single which is one independent variable and for multiple linear regression we have one dependent variable and we have multiple independent variables okay so uh from the mathematical standpoint we use the letter y to represent the dependent variable and we use the letter x to represent the independent variable so for a simple linear regression we have just one y and one x and for a multiple linear regression we're going to be having just one y and uh, several values of x meaning x1 x2 x3 so if you're going to be predicting with uh four independent variables you're going to be having x1 x2 x3 x4 so i think i've been able to like give you an overview of what uh the linear and the multiple uh, regression is all about so that being said let's apply it to um the superstar data set when we take a look at it right here we have um four numerical variables we have sales we have quantity we have discount and we have profit so uh as a businessman i'm all about um profit okay so uh let's assume i want to predict the value of profit from the value of sales the value of quantity and the value of discount so in this case of ours my profit is actually going to be uh the dependent variable the y variable or the predicted variable and sales quantity and discount will actually be the independent variables okay so that means sales can be x1 quantity can be x2 and discount can be x3 x3 rather so in this case since i'm having just a single dependent variable which is profit and three independent variables which is actually sales quantity and discount i would be building a multiple linear regression so if i was going to be predicting profit from sales then it's going to be a simple linear regression so the process of building both multiple and simple is actually the same thing so you know what i'll just start with um building a simple then build a multiple so if you want to build um the simple linear regression like i said it is the same thing as a multiple all you have to do is to come to uh, the data analysis pack you come to data rather then you come to data analysis okay uh, you can see all of those details right here and you look for regression and you can see regression right here as you can see it did not specify if it is actually multiple or linear it just says regression so it simply means that it can actually work on the linear and the multiple so uh we have the regression we click on okay uh so it asks for the input y range so that is the uh the predicted variable the uh the dependent variable okay and we know that the dependent variable right here according to the uh data 
according to me rather is the profit so i can just uh take this up then select all of this then i'll control shift down to select all of that i press this button right here so i've selected from u2 down to u995 okay um it asks for the input x range so let me say i want to just predict a profit from let's say sales so i can just also press this button then uh control shift down it selects all of that and then i bring it out now i've selected the x range i've selected the y range so you can also click on this for it to give you the 95 percent confidence interval for some parameters um which i won't click on okay so it asks for the output range meaning where do you want it to post uh the output meaning once it has built the model for you where you want it to post it so i can just let it post it in a new worksheet okay that's that and i think that's all you can click on the residuals the standard residual like these are a bit you know advanced and detailed information about your um your regression i think i'll make a separate video about those parts but in this video i just want to like talk about how to build and interpret a linear regression okay i can also click on the normal and on the normal probability plot but i won't so once i'm done i click on okay it runs it and it brings out this beautiful output right here okay so let me just um okay all right so this is the summary output and it has just like three sections okay uh, we have those uh the, reg the regression statistics we have the anova and uh we have the intercept so the x variable right here is actually the profit uh the sales okay because i i used profit to predict i was predicting profits rather from sales now this is the output for a single or a simple linear regression rather so if i'm supposed to have a multiple linear regression uh it's going to be this it's going to be the same thing i will have the regression statistics the anova but i'll be having th uh three variables right here so meaning variable one variable two variable three all right uh so um i won't interpret this i would just i won't interpret this okay i would just um you know perform the multiple regression and then just take it from there so let me go back to the superstar data set and uh, perform the multiple linear regression this time i'll be predicting profit uh with sales discount and quantity okay so i come back to data uh data analysis regression okay it has already marked the whole thing so uh, our input range which is the uh, our input y range rather which is the uh, the dependent variable still remains the same I can just erase this okay then uh i select the whole of the sales discount and uh, quantity right so i just select all of this then i hold shift and control i press it down okay so it selects everything from there from sales down to discount okay so i can decide not to like you know click another thing and just make sure that the model is built on a new worksheet okay and uh, once i'm done i click on ok and uh, you see it brings out something new entirely and um i can decide to like make this i think there's a there's a short code uh a short cut uh to actually increase the, uh, or to fit the column width but I, I don't think i can remember that so let's just keep it there all right so i'll be using this to interpret so if you notice uh, this is for the multiple let me just call that the multiple regression and uh, this is uh, for the simple and if you take a closer look you can see that we have three variables right here we have uh, one variable right here and some of the values are actually changing okay you see we have the change in here we have the change in here so let's start with the multiple okay <clears throat> so we have the multiple r so the multiple r is simply the correlation coefficient of the model as a whole and now the word correlation coefficient is simply the strength of association between variables okay so in this case of r it's saying that the model as a whole has uh, a correlation coefficient of 0 0.52222 which is to a degree it's not bad okay it's okay that is like 52.2 percent um correlation which is okay so the r squared is actually what we'll call um the coefficient of determination and that is just uh the explanation in the dependent variable that can be explained by the independent variables so um it's more or less like okay 
the dependent variable is changing it has a, a variation all right and this variation can be explained by the independent variables based on those values so if the dependent variables are to explain the variation in the dependent variable okay so it will be doing that at an accuracy of 27.27 percent which is actually a poor value because at least for us to have um a good r square it should be starting from something like let's say 60 70 so at the r squared of 27.227 that's actually uh, a bad r squared you know we really don't want such r squared in fact we use the r squared to actually kind of in quotes um determine the strength of the model that is how accurate the model is so uh, at a value of 27.2 percent then we have uh, a bad model so meaning um is it that we add more variables to be able to predict profits accurately or we you know we do some other things so the adjusted r squared is just the same thing as the r squared but this time it is the r squared that is um actually given to us but it's considered the number of independent variables that we have so this r squared is just like a plain r squared no consideration but this r squared is considering the values of it's considered the number of independent variables rather and as you can see there is i won't say practically no difference sometimes the difference is usually uh a bit significant but most times they are actually really really close so the standard error this is more or less like regarding to uh sampling i will just skip those and the number of observations okay so the anova is where it's uh you know it's something i can actually skip but uh the anova is just uh a one way anova in this case of ours and it is basically used to test for the difference between the means of of two population group or two or more population groups rather so uh in this case of as the anova writer is trying to tell us uh if there's a difference in the mean between the variables that we are using to predict uh the value of the profit and uh you know this is a bit of hypothesis test so the basis of hypothesis test is that if your p-value is actually greater than a level of significance then it means that the test is not significant and if your p-value is actually lesser than a level of significance it means that the test is actually significant so for this ANOVA right here the null hypothesis is that um, there is actually no difference between the means of the variables that we are working with and the alternative is that there is actually a difference so going by this p-value right here the significance we can say that zero is actually lesser than let's assume a five percent level of significance that our zero is zero is lesser than 0 0.05 which is a five percent so obviously uh our test is significance and uh, is significant rather so we are concluding that the means of the variables that we use to perform our regression is uh is actually you know they are actually uh different from each other one way or the other so the third part is where it gets interesting you can see we have uh, the coefficients we have the standard error we have the test statistics we have the p-value and we have the confidence interval i won't touch the confidence interval okay it's really not needed so the x1 variable the x variable one is representing uh the sales okay so i think that is it's ticked, it took it like this it's taking it like from sales quantity discounts okay so that's the sales uh this is quantity and uh, this right here is actually discount okay all right so this is the coefficient of the discount sorry this is the coefficient of the intercepts okay this is the coefficient of the sales this is the coefficient of the quantity and this is the coefficient of the discount so so i'll be focusing my attention on the sales quantity and discount so this coefficient right here represents the uh the values of the slope so this value of 0.100 represents the the slope value between profit and uh, sales so now this value right here actually represents the slope and from the basic mathematics we know that the value of the slope uh, which is m is equal to the change in y over change in x so that means uh that your change in y is actually equals to the slope times uh the change in x so um this slope value simply tells us that if there is a unit change in the value of the profits meaning if the change if the profits changes by one unit then then there is going to be a 0.18 increase in the value of the sales we are saying increase because there's a positive value right here okay there's actually a positive value right here now the standard error is actually we can skip that the test statistics so uh the model so excel actually performed an hypothesis test on the model which is 
having this test statistics and uh, the test statistics gave us a p-value of zero so the zero which is the p-value is la is actually lesser than is actually lesser than 0 0.05 which is actually our level of significance so that simply implies that the slope between the uh, the profit and the sales is actually significant at a five percent level of significance so that means yes it is actually correct and conclusive for us to say that once the profit you know goes up by one unit or decreases by one unit uh then the sales will actually increase or decrease by uh, 0.18 units so let's come to quantity so we have a negative value right here that is a minus 2.9621 so that means uh if the value of the profit increases by one unit then the value of the slope i'm uh, sorry the value of the quantity rather will be decreasing by units of 2.962 okay that is just that so that means uh the quantity will be decreasing 2.962 times of that of the uh the profit so like it's just like saying um if i'm 10 years old and my brother is like two times my age so that means my brother is like um 20 years old you okay. get so that's that about that so for the discount so that that's a big value we have minus 2.33457000 uh it simply means that if the value of profit is, is increasing by just one unit then the value of the discount is going to be decreasing and uh you can see that uh these values are actually significant for quantity it is significant because 0.00124 is actually lesser than 0 0.05 and this is also a very low value that is 8.4427 times there is one minus 1.25 this is actually a very zero value which is obviously lesser than um it's actually lesser than 0 0.05 so that simply means that there is a positive relationship between profit and sales okay there is a negative relationship between profit and profit and quantity there is a negative relationship between profit and uh discount okay so in summary sales has a positive relationship with profit quantity has a po a, post a negative relationship with profit a uh, discount has a negative relationship with profit and all of this uh relationship are actually significant at a five percent level of significance so we have the value of the intercept so the intercept right here is just um the value on the x axis when the value on the y axis is actually equals to zero so if we're supposed to write the equation that defines this um model as a whole it's going to be that a uh, profit it is actually equals to 0 0.1800 times sales uh then minus 2.96217 times quantity and um minus 2.33457 times a discount so then we will not add the intercept our intercept is a uh, plus 34.972 and that is the regression equation model that actually defines the data sets now if you come to the simple you can see that uh the multiple r is actually 0 0.479 when you compare that to this you can see that this is actually huge the r squared is actually 0 0.229 but if you notice the r squared kind of like 0 0.27 it's kind of like increased okay uh the adjusted r squared is uh, still the same thing so one of the ways to actually increase the accuracy of your regression model is by actually increasing the number of variables that we have right here now the reason why so the reason why we don't have a huge difference right here even though we added more variables is because something is wrong with the data so uh, there are some assumptions that you must actually you know you must actually meet before you can actually be able to have a very accurate linear regression model and one of them is that you should not have an outlier so if i'm supposed to uh perform this test the normal way i'm supposed to like follow some certain conditions uh one of them is that uh all of the variables you're working with are supposed to be normally distributed so that means uh, on a normal day i'm supposed to perform a test for normality on all of the four variables also we shouldn't have any outliers in our data set so i should actually one way or the other remove all the outliers in our data set we should also uh, check for multicollinearity and uh, you know all of those stuffs but i will be doing the proper regression analysis probably in other videos but this is just a way to show you how to build and interpret a linear regression model using microsoft excel i hope i've made you learn something new and uh, enjoy this video and i'm hoping that i've been able to like make this as simple as possible so if you enjoyed this video and you learned something new please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel uh, do you think I missed something or you have some questions for me? Please uh, go down to the comment section and drop 
your comments i'll be willing and ready to attend to them so thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one bye for now